Hey everyone, my name is Wedge and we finally made it to Eldritch Moon preview season. Innistrad is already in shambles, like it is not good. The previews from today really drive that point home, it's super disgusting. You're not ready for these cards. New mechanics, new creature types, a disgusting tentacle based story, I hope you enjoy. We'll begin with a new mechanic called Meld. Let's take a look at Graph Rats and Midnight Scavengers. At the beginning of combat on your turn, if you both own and control Graph Rats and a creature named Midnight Scavengers, exile them, then meld them into Chittering Host. Wait, so we're dealing with a mechanic that transforms two creatures into one? Well, how does that work on the backside? What? Sideways cards? What is this unglued? Anyways, Chittering Host is a 5-6 Eldrazi horror with haste and menace. When it enters the battlefield, other creatures you control get plus 1 plus 0 and gain madness until end of turn. So, okay, wow, this is like a mini Exodia. You get both creatures in play, then whenever it's triggered, you turn them both over, put them in defense mode, and stack them vertically. This is like magic plus Yu-Gi-Oh plus unglued plus acid. I don't know, this is crazy. I cannot wait to see how awkward these cards look on the back. I mean, look at that. That is so weird. What a peculiar mechanic. The backside of these cards better be amazing. Chittering Host is alright, but that's a lot of hoops to jump through. Maybe with another example, we could get more of an idea of how powerful this mechanic could be. Yeah, if only we had another example. Small note, melded cards go to the graveyard as their own cards. So Chittering Host turns back into the rats and scavengers. If it's unsummoned back to your hand, same deal, both go back. Also, the melded card has a converted mana cost equal to the total converted mana cost of the two cards that make it up, just so you know. Bruna the Fading Light is 5 of anything and 2 white for a 5-7 legendary creature angel horror with flying and vigilance. When you cast Bruna, you may return target angel or human creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Alright, Bruna's pretty gigantic. Nice combat mechanics, high casting costs for sure, but something interesting. It says melds with Gisela the Broken Blade. What could, uh, what could that mean? Gisela the Broken Blade is 2 of anything and 2 white for a 4-3 legendary creature angel horror with flying, first strike, and lifelink. At the beginning of your end step, if you both own and control Gisela and a creature named Bruna the Fading Light, exile them, then meld them into Brasella, Voice of Nightmares. Okay, okay, wait, Brasella? They really combine the names like a Hollywood couple? Awesome, just wait a second. If that's the case, oh no, they're melded together? Let, let's take a look. Brasella, Voice of Nightmares, is a 9-10 legendary creature Eldrazi angel with flying, first strike, vigilance, and lifelink. Your opponents can't cast spells with converted mana cost three or less. Ah, uh, one, this is completely disgusting and tragic. Two, those are a lot of abilities. Three, they're all amazing. Four, being able to get this thing onto the battlefield is going to be one of the more difficult tasks in a game of magic. Wow. I do want to take a moment to talk about Gisela independently. She's amazing. Four mana for a 4-3 with flying first strike and lifelink is backbreaking. That's incredibly strong, like really powerful. Also, both of these angels are still mono white. I love that. Mono white horrors aren't as common as they should be, but I digress. Gisela is much more playable than Bruna, and if you want Brasella, you're going to have to carry Bruna like an anchor. You get that monster in play though, so jeez, most unsummoned effects can't even hit it because most of them can't even be cast. Same with most removal, it's just savage. Let's stay on the meld train for a second. Hand where Battlements is a land card you can tap to add one colorless to your mana pool. You can also pay one red and tap it and target creature gains haste until end of turn. Handware Garrison is 3 mana for a 2-3 human soldier. Whenever it attacks, put two 1-1 one, one red human creature tokens onto the battlefield tapped and attacking. On the battlement, you can pay 3 of anything and 2 red and tap it. If you both own and control the battlement and a creature named Handware Garrison, exile them, then meld them into Handware the Writhing Township. Hamware the Writhing Township is a 7-4 legendary creature Eldrazi ooze with trample and haste. Whenever it attacks, put two 3-2 three, two colorless Eldrazi horror tokens onto the battlefield tapped and attacking. Honestly, Township seems fine and all, but I really want to talk about the individual cards themselves. I find both of them more than adequate. 
The Battleman is sweet and an aggressive deck. Being able to give something haste that easily is nice. The Garrison, on the other hand, creating two humans reminds me of Hero of Bladehold. Not nearly as good, of course, but still very cool. I'm really impressed with both halves of this card. Long Road Home is two mana for an instant exile target creature. At the beginning of the next end step, return that card to the battlefield under its owner's control with a plus one plus one counter on it. Fun fact, if you use this card on a melded creature, both halves of the creature come back separately and with plus one plus one counters on them. Pretty cool little interaction there since exiling undoes the meld. Wretched Griff is 7 mana for a 3-4 Eldrazi Hippogriff, great creature type, with flying and whenever you cast it, draw a card. It also has a new mechanic called Emerge. You may cast this spell by sacrificing a creature and paying the Emerge cost reduced by that creature's converted mana cost. For example, let's say you have a Reflector Mage on the battlefield. You can sacrifice it, subtract its total mana cost from this card's Emerge cost, and play the Griff. So a merge would normally cost 5 of anything and 1 blue, but sacrificing Reflector Mage reduces that by 3, so now it only costs 2 of anything and 1 blue. This ability doesn't count colors of mana, so you will always have to at least pay 1 blue to emerge this, but it's still very cool. We're looking at a mechanic that will allow you to use creatures that are no longer useful to cast bigger things that are. This Griff isn't the greatest creature in the world, but at half its mana cost it's pretty sweet and that could easily happen. Nice mechanic, lots of room to make this good. Problem, Commander. Anyone else see this new mechanic and just think, wow, cause Marin needed more help. Honestly, you have to imagine there are going to be at least a few emerge spells that will fit into that build. Can't wait for that to happen. This is like a modern take on the Kamigawa mechanic of old and tribute Yu-Gi-Oh cards. What is happening in this set? Also, want to know where that wretched Griff came from? Here's Dawn Griff. It looks so peaceful. Aw. More new mechanics. Blessed Alliance is two mana for an instant with Escalate 2. Choose one or more. Target player gains four life, or untap up to two target creatures, or target opponent sacrifices an attacking creature. You can pay two of anything for each mode chosen beyond the first. Okay, so normally you cast this card and you can pick only one option. It's how these usually work. Escalate lets you pay two mana more and choose another one. If you pay 4 mana more, you get all of them. Now you have to use them in order, and you have to choose to escalate when you cast a spell, so if it gets countered, you're out of luck. Being able to untap creatures, make an opponent sacrifice an attacker, and the ability to gain life. If you're trying to draw your opponent into a trap, Alliance is a fantastic payoff card. We get it, wizards, you really like white right now. Seriously, this card's bonkers good. 4 mana removal and set up surprise blocks, 6 mana to do all that and gain 4 life, I don't know. Card seems pretty good to me. Let's look at another less impactful Escalate spell. Borrowed Malevolence is 1 black mana for an instant with Escalate 2. Choose 1 or both. Target creature gets plus 1 plus 1 until end of turn, and target creature gets minus 1 minus 1 until end of turn. Less intense, but still decent for combat and draft. 3 mana to pump something and potentially kill something else, make a nice power slash toughness swing in combat, is a decent common. This is a much simpler way to show that Escalate does have value. It's neat. Cryptal with Fragment is 3 mana for an artifact. It enters the battlefield tapped. You can tap it to add 1 mana of any color to your mana pool. Each player loses 1 life. At the beginning of your upkeep, if each player has 10 or less life, transform it into Aurora of Emrakul, a 1-4 Eldrazi reflection with flying and death touch. Whenever it attacks, each opponent loses 3 life. Important to note, this only transforms if each player has 10 or less life, makes it much less ridiculous. Of course, you could always put it in a deck with Triskaidekaphobia and watch everyone die slowly. That's always nice. Also, can I just say, I am freaking out about the creature type. We're talking reflections. This brings me back to Tempest with Spirit Mirror. It's, uh, it's been a while. Chilling Grasp is 3 mana for an instant with madness costing 4 mana. Tap up to 2 target creatures. Those creatures don't untap during their controller's next and tap step. As many have already pointed out, this is a strict upgrade to Frost Breath. No way around that. The most important thing about this card, though, that artwork. McKinnon, you're crazy, man. That art is so awesome. Gnarlwood Dryad is one green mana for a 1-1 Dryad Horror with Death Touch. It gets plus 2, plus 2 as long as there are 4 more card types among cards in your graveyard. Yes, this is what I was talking about. This is what Delirium needed to be good. The Dryad is definitely pushed for standard. 
A potential 3-3 for 1 mana? Oh yeah. Now this is no Nimble Mongoose, obviously, but it's as good as we're going to get for our Graveyard Matters mechanic. Puts up a nice wall with Death Touch to force trades. A few things to think about. First, this isn't the green card for a deck like Green White Tokens or anything like that. This is for an Aristocrats deck, something that abuses the graveyard or is based on lots of spells being cast. Second, Modern? I've heard arguments on both sides about its inclusion in Jund and Death's Shadow. Not that I'm supporting either side, but the conversation existing at all is pretty cool. As far as opening day of preview seasons usually go, this one's been sweet. We saw a bunch of new mechanics with plenty of potential power. We see mechanics returning on decent cards, and we're just throwing all semblance of sanity out the window and using two cards to make one. The set's going to be legitimately ridiculous. Let me know what you think in the comments about everything revealed today. Do you like the direction the set is going in? What about the mechanics? What about Bracella? I gotta know. As always, subscribe for the latest and most reliable Eldritch Moon spoiler information you could ever need. This is the Mana Source. I'm Wedge. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. This video is brought to you in part by TCGPlayer.com. As we dive into Eldritch Moon preview season, do not get left behind when it comes to getting your standard staples. You don't want to lose out to cards as they climb up in price. With that in mind, Arlen Court is still incredibly cheap considering her power. You can get your copies right now for around 10 bucks. You should really get on that. Not your jam, no problem. Based on what we've seen here today, it doesn't look like Mono White is going anywhere. Grab some Thalia's Lieutenants if you need them. Card is everywhere, but it's only $3. Seems as good a time as any. Click the links, help the channel, enjoy.